Entrevista con Michael Swambon, el profesor encargado del proyecto de la Louisiana Tech que desarrolla los autos prototipo para el Shell Eco Marathon. We're here with Professor uh, Swambon from the Louisiana Tech, uh, winners of the uh, Shell Eco Marathon this year, right? Not this year. We did win the design award oh, the design uh, for award. one of our vehicles, so that was a, a good thing that we're happy about. Um, a couple of years ago, we we did win in the diesel fuel category, um, and the vehicle you see over there, that on the right, that one is uh, it got 488 miles to the gallon equivalent um, using diesel fuel. So uh, winning the Echo Marathon was uh, the Shell Echo Marathon was pretty cool. But what happened today here was probably cooler than that. Oh, Two it, Formula One drivers driving your cars. It was pretty cool, all right. Yeah, they. Um, they really put those cars through their paces and uh, I don't think we've ever driven them that way so it was pretty exciting to see them drive them that way. So I asked Fernando Alonso uh, about what did, he, what did he thinks about your students uh, creating these pretty sophisticated cars that they cannot be compared to Formula One cars but they're pretty pretty sophisticated machinery right uh, and he was like amazed by what you guys can do. Well I, he's, he speaks very kindly um, The main thing is it's a great experience for the students. Um, they get to build those cars essentially from the ground up. Um, they get to learn a whole lot in the process that's very difficult to teach in the classroom. And so that's what, uh, that's what we're in it for, is to try to get the students that kind of experience. And uh, you know that grows them as people, not only in, in technical skills, but also in leadership. And we care about that kind of thing at Louisiana Tech, so that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, the teamwork that uh, that you see during the events of the Shell Echo Marathon is amazing because pretty much they stay like sometimes they're all night working on the thing to have the cars ready, right? Absolutely, yeah. There's always stuff that comes up, it seems like, at the day of the event. And uh, the team really comes together and has to work together and fix whatever comes up and um, hopefully get back on the track the next day and that, that's another really good experience and outcome that comes out of the project. So obviously you're the leader of the project, uh, I mean you, you teach them a lot, but like how much of their own uh, knowledge and like skill they put into building the cars? Um, many of them come in with a little bit of experience, but uh, I would say that most of the stuff that they do, they, they learn sort of on the job while they're uh, working with other students. and. Um, You know, it's really good to see them get to start taking initiative and, and working on some things that uh, maybe no one has done before on our team and, and building a little bit more uh, expertise in certain areas as they do that. So, um, you know, that's, that's the other, some of the other products that come out of the projects that, um, you know, it's really exciting. So how long does it take to build one of these cars? We start uh, usually right at the very beginning of September in the process of... Um, doing the design and we do all the design virtually in a piece of software called SolidWorks and uh, usually toward about the end of October, right about now, we're uh, getting ready to cut the foam that we use as the molds to build the new car. So the new car will be racing next year? That's correct. In the spring, um, and, and it kind of moves around to different dates, but in the spring uh, there's the event where we go and we actually get to check out you know, how well the cars do. Um, we're on a cycle where a lot of times we build a car and we don't get a chance uh, to test it very much prior to its first run. But then with our other car that we built the year before, we can refine that more and we can get it up to the level it should be in terms of its performance numbers. And so that's what we're hoping for the, the one we're calling Diesel Dog that's here, is that uh, the numbers that it has will hopefully go up significantly at this coming event in uh, in Detroit. I think you're being pretty modest because you're not mentioning the numbers that are pretty impressive. Um, we, we currently hold the record uh, in diesel fuel economy um, for the urban class, urban concept class at 488 miles to the gallon. Wow. Um, that's done on a six mile course and they, it uses just a little tiny bit of fuel to do six miles and based on that they can measure uh, what it would be. Uh, For, uh, you know, for 488 miles. Absolutely. So. And uh, finally, how important is the support of Shell to promote these kind of programs? Well, I think it's a really good thing for them to do from a couple of standpoints. One, uh, I think they do care about uh, things like fuel economy. 
But the other thing is, is it's really growing the students and it's kind of growing expertise in the next generation that's coming. So that's what's really exciting, I think, to them as well, is just the educational experience that they are providing for. Yeah. And, uh, and you, you get to, to ga have your cars driven by Fernando Alonso and Kimi Raikkonen. <laughs> Not that bad either. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a pretty cool experience. That's one of those things that just doesn't happen every day. So yeah. we're excited about that. They really... Uh, You know, they drove them like, like race drivers, and that's not something we get to see a lot either. So uh, it was really cool, um, and uh, we really appreciate the opportunity to, to have this. Yeah, uh, I, think, I think Fernando won uh, the race. <laughs> he, he did uh, pass uh, Kiwi, uh, Kiwi and, and, and uh, so, you know, that was pretty cool. I, I kind of expected that he probably would win, <laughs> but uh, anyway, it was pretty neat. Well, congratulations again, and uh, good luck with your new project, and I hope to see you in Detroit next year. Well, I appreciate that, and I'll look for you when I'm there. Thank you very much. Bye. Impresionante el trabajo que desarrolla el Instituto Tecnológico de Luisiana con estos autos del Shell Eco Marathon, y que como escucharon ayer en la entrevista, estarán participando en la nueva edición que a partir de 2015 se celebrará en Detroit, y donde seguramente también vamos a estar para estar cubriendo esta nueva actividad con Shell. Y ahora vamos a pasar de esta a lo que se puede decir la teoría, lo, lo experimental de que es el, la, la tecnología de Shell, con, eh, para pasar a la Fórmula 1. Y para eso vamos a hablar con Guy Lovett, que es el gerente tecnológico de Shell para la escudería Ferrari en la Fórmula 1. Es el encargado de realizar todos los uh, estudios, todos los exámenes, todas las uh, inspecciones a la gasolina y a los lubricantes que utilizan los autos de la Fórmula 1. Que en la gasolina tienen restricciones, es decir, existen reglas muy estrictas al respecto de lo que pueden usar. Mientras que en los combustibles es mucho más amplio el panorama para experimentar. Así que este es Guy Lovett, el gerente técnico de Shell para la Ferrari. Well, Guy, thank you for having us here in Austin, Texas, for the uh, US uh, Formula One Prix. And uh, so uh, a big relationship between Shell and Ferrari. I mean, we always see the logo there, but like, what does that really mean for the people who are listening? It's, it's, a, it's a lot deeper than just having our pectin on the side of the car. Uh, it's truly a technical partnership. We've been working with Ferrari for upwards of 60 years now. Um, we do a tremendous amount of activity with one another. We, at the moment, right, just recently, we've been working on um, latest fuels and oils for the 2014 season. Um, it truly is a partnership. We're co-developing both the fluids with the, with the engine and vice versa. So uh, the, the, the fuel that goes into Formula One car, is it like the, the same as we can buy in a Shell station anywhere around the world? Absolutely. That's one of the key aspects and key uh, um, interest points for Shell, quite frankly, is to be able to use all of the innovation, all the technology and all the understanding around the work that we're doing with Ferrari and Formula One uh, and directly transferring that and applying that to um, our road going equivalent such as V-Power and Pennzoil motor oil and really that is of vital importance to Shell. Essentially 99% of the same types of compounds uh, that are in the race fuel are contained in uh, normal road going fuels. That's so they are that similar. Yeah, that's pretty amazing because like, if, if I didn't know that, I would like, think like, well, that, that fuel must cost like $20 a gallon or something like that. Because, for example, jet fuel for planes is more expensive than regular fuel, right? Uh, the pr pricing of fuel is, is obviously different <laughs> no, around the world. I know. Yeah. Uh, how I'm the pricing saying... of Formula One fuel is, well, it's priceless. <laughs> exactly. The, the amount of knowledge, innovation, intellectual property and experience that, that supply to our um, fuel and lubricant research means that we, we yeah, it's, it's, it's almost priceless. Yeah. So uh, you guys uh, travel with the team, obviously, through the, through the whole season around the world. Yep. We're, we're present at every single race, so 19 races this season. Uh, there's always three, three shell scientists at each race, uh, and we're, we're there to, to run and to man and to support Ferrari with our trackside laboratory, conducting real-time and continuous fuel and oil analysis to make sure that our products are in prime condition um, and that we're giving a competitive advantage to Ferrari. Okay, the other part of, uh, of um, the, what you do, the oil, the oil is really different. I mean, that has to be different. Yeah. It, it, In Formula One, the, the, the specifications for fuel are quite strict, which, which, which mandate that uh, the fuels are very similar to road-going fuel. Conversely, with, uh, on the oil side, there are no rules governing the oils that we can use with Ferrari. And, and as a result, we can afford to be very aggressive and very innovative with our, with our formulations. 
but in, in reality the, the, the building blocks and the components that we have available to us to, to formulate the oils for Ferrari and Formula 1 are exactly the same as those that we use um, in NASCAR for example, uh, across other motorsports and also for our road going oils such as Pennzoil. We just construct those components differently because they are different applications. Yeah. So the technology, there's technology commonality across all of our oils. That's incredible. Well, now uh, when people see the Shell uh, logo in a Formula One car or in a NASCAR car, now we know what, what's going on besides what you said. It's much more than just putting it there. Absolutely, a lot more. Thank you very much, David. And, uh, and Guy, I'm sorry, and uh, we'll keep enjoying here the experience at the Formula One race. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting. 